Hello guys, in this video we are going to see, look about semantics and word vectors. We have seen the definition of each of them in the previous videos. But now in this video we will use both of them for a practical experience. So sometimes called opinion mining, Wikipedia articles defines sentiment analysis as <clears throat> the use of natural language processing to systematically identify, extract, quantify and study effective states and subject information, generally speaking, sentiment analysis aims to determine the attitude of a speaker, writer or other subject with respect to some topic or overall contextual polarity of emotional reaction to a document, interaction or event. This is a definition of sentiment analysis by Wikipedia. So the way this is done is through complex machine learning algorithms like word to pick The idea is to create numerical arrays or word embeddings for every word in a large corpus. Each word is assigned its own vector in such a way that the words that frequently appear together in the same context are given vectors that are close together. The result is a model that may not have a lion is an animal but does know that the lion is closer to a context to cat than dandelion. <clears throat> it is important to know that building useful model takes a long time, hours or days to train a large corpus and that for our purpose, it is best to import an existing model rather than take the time to train your own model. So what we'll do is install the various library. The library that we will deal with is PC. So before we install, let us first look again into word vectors. So word vectors are called word embeddings are basically the mathematical descriptions of individual words such as words that appear frequently together in the language will have similar values. In this way, we can mathematically derive context. As mentioned above, the word vector for lion will be closer to the value to cat than to, than to dandelion. And what are the vector values? So what does a word vector look like? Since Spacey employs 300 dimensions, word vectors are stored as 300 item arrays. Note that we would see the same set of values with Encore WebMD and Encore WebLG as both were trained using word to vector family of algorithms. Now let's start. The first thing we are going to do, we are going to import Spacey and load the Encore WebMD model. Now when, when I run this piece of code, so after this, we will write NLP dot line. And when I run this, now you can see this is the vector for the word lion, and you can see it contains 300 dimension as spacey contract center dimension and the data type is also given as float 32. So these are the 300 dimension values of the line word, which is the word vector for the word line. So what interesting is that DOC and span objects themselves have vectors derived from the averages of individual token vectors. This make it possible to compare similarity between the whole documents. Now when I take a doc, uh, when I convert, uh, when I take a just normal dog, the quick brown fox job of the lady dogs, and when I try to print the vectorize of this uh, sentence, what I get? Okay, I again get a usually a fed embedding vector, 300 dimensions with the different values. So basically, this is the vector representation of this entire doc. Now what I want to do next is to take a sentence lion cat pet and iterate only over onto this particular document and compare the respective word vector similarity with the next word that is I will compare the lion's word vector with the cat's word vector and the pet's word vector and similarly cat with lion and pet and cats itself and pet with lion cat and pet itself. So let's run this piece of code and look at the results. So when I run this piece of Code. So you can see the lion lion is giving one score, lion cat is giving 0 0.385, lion pet is giving 0 0.20, cat lion is giving this score, cat cat 1, pet pet 1. So one thing to note here is that lion and lion similarity is obviously because both are the same thing. So they are having the similarity score of 1 and so goes for the cat and pet and pet. And as you can see, lion cat lion and cat have more similarity score than compared to lion and pet and so on. One thing to note that the order doesn't matter. 
token one dot similarity token two has same value as token two similarity as token one. So if you think you can even change this to token two dot similarity token one. So as expected, we see the strongest similarity between cat and pet, the weakest between the lion and pet, and some similarity between lion and cat. A word will have a perfect one point similarity with itself. Obvious reason because it will denote the same set of vector values. And if you want to compare lion similarity score with the dandelion, I have run this piece of code and you can see the similarity score, which is about 0 0.1467. So basically, one thing to note here that opposites are not necessarily different. That means words that have opposite meanings but that often appear in the same context may have similar vectors and that things might shock you. So for example, I write an example, I take a sentence, lion love hate. And when I print out the semantics uh, similarity between the words among this document, uh, the sentence itself, so I get the following result. So as you can see, lion like, I mean like like, sorry I said as lion, it was like. So like like has 1.0, like love has 0 0.52, like hate has 0 0.56. If you can see clearly that like and love are basically on the same side and like and hate are on opposite side even if compared with the love. But we are here seeing it that like and hate having more similarity score, sorry I mean love and hate has 0 0.57 that means love and hate which are like totally opposite sentence opposite words are having the highest similarity score so that might be shocking for you so it doesn't matter so it's not always matter that the opposite words must have the least similarity they can even have the best similarity score as you just saw now finally let's talk about the vector norms. So it's sometimes helpful to aggregate 300 dimensions into a Euclidean L2 norm computed as the square root of the sum of squared vectors. This is accessible as the doctor, uh, dot vector underscore norm to token attribute. Other helpful attributes include dot has vector and is OOV vector out which is out of vocabulary. For example our 685k vector library may not have the word nargal to test this. So when I run this piece of code, you can see that Nargal is having false, which is true, which is, does not exist in our 685k vector library. That's the reason it is giving 0.0, .0 and false. Indeed, we see that Nargal does not have a vector. So the vector underscore norm value is 0 and it, def and it identifies as out of vocabulary. So any word which is not in your uh, vector library will be considered as an out of vo vocabulary library, out of vector. That is OOV, out of vector, out of vocabulary, sorry. Another thing is like, believe it or not, we can actually calculate the new vectors by adding and subtracting related vectors. A famous example suggests king minus man plus woman equals to king, queen. As we all know, king is to man is similar to woman is to queen. So if we subtract king uh, vector with the man and when we add woman's vector along with it, the resultant vector which you get will be exact or similar to the vector of queen. For the demonstrated example, you can check out this following piece of code. Now we can find the closest vector in the vocabulary to the result of man minus woman plus queen. So in this case, king was still closer than queen to our calculated vector, although queen did not show up. So yeah, this was much about the semantics and the word vectors. Why are using spacey? Hope you like the video. Thank you.